Let's go ahead and jump on over to the betting lines. These odds are from FanDuel. And before we hop into our picks for this, guys, go on over to WSN.com, the World Sports Network. Find yourself a FanDuel promo code. You can get a $2,500 no sweat first bet. Normally it's $1,000. They've taken it up to $2,500. That means up to $2,500, you miss your first bet, you get that amount back in bet credits bet credits can be used to place bets and if you win them you get cash prizes just like you would any other bet so it's a great deal for you all the nuggets are favored by two and a half points on the road miami obviously plus two and a half at home i personally am on the nuggets at minus two and a half in this one this is the third game in a row that i'm taking the nuggets against the spread although i will say i had a first half spread for one of those picks i just have a lot of faith in them i think that this is a series oh, that's a battle of adjustments and Michael Malone, although Eric Spolster is the best coach in the NBA, he's going to make adjustments. He's not going to be completely outfoxed. I also think he's going to be able to get into the head of Michael Porter Jr., who was a much improved rebounder and defender throughout most of the playoffs, but he made himself unplayable in, last game, in the last game. That was a big part of why the Nuggets offense also faltered. And again, just stupid defensive mistakes. That was the main reason that the Nuggets did lose that game. I think he's going to have it drilled in their head. We have to be on our P's and our Q's. I don't think it's going to happen. I like the Nuggets winning this one. Yeah, Nuggets minus two and a half, slam dunk. Bring it home. In game one, I was on Denver at minus eight, minus nine, whatever it was. Game two, I like the Heat at plus eight and a half. My, my only thought process there was they need to be a little better than they were from the three-point line, and they were, and they were still in game one down the stretch. Like There was a point where it looked like they might have pulled off a backdoor cover, so I did take them there. I will be back on the Nuggets in this one. I think Coach Malone, the thing I like about him at least, you know, he might not be the same basketball mind as Eric Spolster. He's still going to make adjustments. But after the game, he was literally ripping these guys in the locker room. He, this is, it was a intensity that you don't necessarily see out of an NBA coach because all these guys are making millions and they all have their own agenda for the most part. Like he was getting in their head and saying, we are going to Miami and we are going to win a basketball game. So I absolutely love that. I think that's another reason to go with Denver. And again, the Heat were 48% from the three-point line or whatever it was. It was very high. When you look at it, that are they going to be able to do that consistently? And the Nuggets only lost by three points when the Heat played their best possible game ever. And the Nuggets played terrible. We've got two picks for the Nuggets here. We're going to hold on, and we're going to ride with those into game three. Right. And let's well, ride on over to my NBA. Huh? I, want to talk to I want to talk total. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Let's talk total. Well, I, what is the total even at, first of all? We want to look at this. So it was 215 last time I checked. I will let you know I have it pulled up right here. It's 214 and a half now. Game one was way under. Game two snuck over. And game two snuck over because of what the Denver Nuggets were able to do down the stretch in that game. Game three, I think this is an overall like an under series. Like I would just continuously play the under. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I, I think – like you said, I mean, going back to your whole theory about the Heat have to make their shots. Granted, they shot 38% to close out the regular season. They're shooting about 38 39% from three in the postseason. But still, they do just have to continue to make those shots. And even when they are making their threes, we've seen them struggle uh, from two-point line. Was it, against, it was against the Celtics where they had that historically bad shooting night in the restricted area. So, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I think the under could definitely be in play here. Yeah, and then when you look at as well as the Heat – shot in game two and the nuggets were pretty efficient like you said like down in the paint when they got the ball to Jokic, they were able to score pretty much every single time when he touches the ball down low and the game still only snuck over because just the pace of play and it felt like it was a pretty fast paced game overall but it really wasn't when you look at where the total was and where the final score ended so i would probably be on the under here but my favorite play again is nuggets minus two and a half even nuggets on the money line minus 140 put a little extra on that just because you're getting a fair price MVP ladder, Tanner. Finals MVP ladder. This is the Grant Mitchell Sportsbook MVP ladder. This is not DraftKings. This is not FanDuel. We have love for all those guys. We have promo codes for all of them. Again, if you want to get yourself some bonus money. But this is just what I've seen. Number five, Jimmy Butler. He is second in the sportsbook's odds right now, but I think that's a future projection. I don't think it's a reflection of what we've seen so far. This is just sort of a tracker of what I've seen. He has been not the best player on the Miami Heat. I think you can make an argument that he's been the third or fourth best player. I do expect him to be better. Obviously, this is Jimmy Butler, but right now he hasn't been that impressive. But some guys who had great games, Haywood Highsmith, ties a career high with 18 points in game one. He's the reason that it ends up even being close in the fourth quarter. 
he was completely off in game two. And then Kyle Lowry hasn't given you enough. Duncan Robinson, excellent in game two, has 10 points all to start the fourth quarter. Didn't do a whole lot in game one. So those guys who have those standout games, they haven't necessarily balanced them out. Jimmy Butler at number five. Number four, Jamal Murray. Now he he has he's down in scoring, he's down in efficiency. I think he's averaging 20, 22 points per game in this series, but he is averaging 10 assists. He had 10 assists in both of the games so far. There's really no argument that he isn't the Nuggets' second best player. And on nights, he can be their best player. We haven't seen it yet, but it's probably going to become be coming in one of these games. Number three, Gabe Vincent. I think there's actually a legitimate argument that he could be number one for the Heat, although I have set him second to someone else. He's been he was their leading scorer in game two, 23 points. This is a guy who talk about Jimmy Butler raising his play. Gabe Vincent has gone to a new stratosphere in these playoffs. He's handling a bunch of the on-ball duties, initiating the offense. He's hitting open shots. He's playing tough defense, even though he's the size of a dwarf out there compared to Jokic. There was a possession where he was matched up against Jokic in the post, and he didn't even double. They just said, Gabe Vincent, you got him. Didn't work out for him, but just goes to show you how hard he's trying out there, and he's been playing really well. He's going to be a free agent this summer, I believe, and he's going to make some money. Number two, Bam Adebayo think he's been the Heat's best player so far. He's getting it done on defense. He's not stopping Jokic because that is impossible, but he's making him work for it. In game two, Jokic was 8 of 18 from the field when Bam was guarding him. Bam also had a block. Jokic had two turnovers, only one assist. Really good numbers from Bam. He's an excellent screener. He's been initiating the offense very well. His ability to score the ball has gone up significantly. He's been over 20 points in each of the finals games so far. I think he's been clearly the Heat's best player, although respect to Gabe Vincent once again. And then number one, Jokic, um, totally dominant in every facet of the game, rebounding, scoring, assisting. Defense has been a lot better as well. He's been the leader of the team. You can see him trying to urge his guys on. You see him barking on the sidelines. And I think there is a chance that if the Heat win this series, let's say it goes seven games, I think there is a chance that Jokic does win finals MVP. Now it it's only happened one time where a losing a player on the losing team has won finals MVP. It was Jerry West, and I think it might have been the first time the finals MVP was ever awarded. Uh, they lost in five games, I believe. LeBron probably has the best chance since then in the 2015 series where Iguodala won MVP. LeBron averaged 36, 13, and 9. But it's just hard for me to look at that and see LeBron didn't win it and see it happening at all, really, no matter how good Jokic's stats are. But I do think the Nuggets are going to win this series. And right now he has been the best player in the NBA finals. Yeah, I just can't see that happening because if the Heat do win in seven games, you got to award them for whoever stepped up and won in game seven, right? Like well, it's gonna it's gonna take a Jimmy Butler game. It's gonna take Bam out of bio being super consistent, right? Um, so I just can't see that happening. I like this list. I'd move it around a little bit. So I would go Jokic number one, out of bio number two just because you're getting Nuggets top player and then the Heat top player. Then I would put Jamal Murray up to three, even though Jamal Murray's not going to win if the Nuggets win because it's 100% going to Jokic. But he is a star player for the Nuggets, and I think they have a better chance than the Heat. I would drop Gabe Vincent to five and then move Jimmy Butler up to four because, again, these awards go to the star players no matter what. They 100% go to the star players no matter – like the – the backup guys have to be, or the secondary guys have to be that much better to win the award. So if it's somewhat close, and by somewhat close, it could be a massive gap. You're still going with the star player because they want to see those guys get the MVP.